Welcome to the monthly meeting of the Oklahoma City Youth Council. The Youth Council is a partnership between the city and Leadership Oklahoma City. The 18 Youth Council members learn about the challenges of local government firsthand, and the program provides them with an effective, meaningful channel to influence decisions affecting their homes, schools, friends, and community. While serving, the members learn about local government, its components, processes, goals, and successes. Okay, guys, could you go ahead and give me your ward report, starting with Kristen over here for Ward 1. Hello, my name is Kirsten Alfonso. I'm a senior at Putnam City High School, and I represent Ward 1. In Ward 1 this month, progress is still being made on the street project on Wilshire and Britain. Also, there are 10 neighborhood night out events this month. They were well attended, and they're very successful. Um, there is an event held at Castle Falls on September 11th by the Friends of Northwest 10th Street. They unveiled their new name, West 10, which is what they're going to be called from now on. Uh, there's a new ordinance being introduced that is attempting to address abandoned buildings through increased code enforcement and the recovery of city costs related to these properties. It is a step in the right direction to discourage the abandonment of properties and to prevent the decline of quality in our neighborhoods. This concludes my report. Thank Very you. good, thank you. Hello, my name is Veronica Woods and I'll be I go to Western Heights High School. I'm a senior and I'll be doing the commission report for Ward 1. There's a lot of things going on in Oklahoma City in this month of October. Oklahoma City Thunder basketball team comes back. Their first game is October 17th at 7 p.m. at Chesapeake Energy Arena against the Grizzlies. There's the Halloween parade on October 25th at Auto Alley. There's the Haunt the River Cruise from October 10th to November 1st. That's at the Oklahoma River Cruises. There is Fright Fest from October 3rd to November 2nd at Frontier City, and it's only on the weekends. There's the Cinderella Play from October 17th to October 19th at Civic Center Music Hall at the times 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. There is the Grand National and World Championship Morgan Horse Show from October 11th to October 18th at State Fair Park. There is an Affair at the, of the Heart from October 24th to October 26th at State Fair Park. There is the, the Barons. The hockey team is coming back. Their first game is also on October 17th at 7 p.m. at Cox Convention Center. The Motley Crew is coming October 10th at 7 p.m. at Chesapeake Energy Arena. Another play is happening at Lyric Theater called The Inspector Calls from October 8th through October 25th. If you want any more details on the events that are going on in our city, please visit www.visitokc.com. And that's all for my commission report. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I am Ryan Maydu. I am a junior at Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School and I am proud to represent Ward 2. New businesses will be popping up in October in Ward 2. The Sola Salon Studios and Real Property Management Enterprises are both opening their doors to the public. Congratulations to the two upcoming businesses opening their doors to the general public as well as, as a great source for public service, local economic growth, and two new additions to Ward 2. In other news, the Paseo Art District is hosting its monthly First Friday Gallery Walk this weekend from 6 to 10 p.m. Friday evening and 12 to 6 p.m. Saturday afternoon. The walk consists of the works of over, of over 60 artists from about 17 different galleries. Often new work from local gallery owners and guest artists is also showcased, so be sure to come down and enjoy this exciting event and one of Oklahoma City's oldest districts. And that concludes my Ward 2 report. Thank you. Thanks. My name is James Williams. I am a senior at Harding Charter Preparatory High School, and I am proud to represent Ward 2. Uh, today I will be presenting the commission report for Ward 2. The Oklahoma City Historic Preservation Commission meets once a month in the city council chambers to discuss public hear or to conduct public hearings on applications for a certificate of appropriateness uh, for the construction, moving, demolition, reconstruction, restoration, or alteration of any structure within a historic preservation district. 
These applications are reviewed by the commission in keeping with the preservation guidelines and standards for Oklahoma City, uh, uh, for Oklahoma City Historic Districts. The commission requires that each application be presented by the published deadline to the historic prevention officer with complete and detailed information on each element of the proposal requiring a certificate of appropriateness. The next meeting of the Historic Preservation Commission is scheduled for 2 p.m. today in the city council chambers. So if you'd like to have something designated as a historic preservation district or to make any alterations within an already existing district, this is who you need to contact. This concludes my Ward 2 Commission report. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tyler Thomas. I go to Mustang High School. I represent Ward 3 and I'll be giving the commission report. The airport has just received over 11.3 million in federal grants from the FAA Airport Improvement Program. The grant will be used this year to construct airfield improvements to taxiways, runways, and airfield lightings at Will Rogers and Wiley Post Airport to purchase two new runway snowblowers for Will Rogers Airport. The second airport trust authorized staff to negotiate a contract for the real Will Rogers Airport terminal expansion and new concourse to FSB Associates. FSB will lead a design team to design the project. Cockpit parking garage should be completed in October. Occupancy rate will be it will exceed 100% and it will be at 100% when the new garage is open. Recent enhancements to the bus routes continue to be received positively from ridership perspectives. COCPA is currently soliciting bids for landscaping at Union Station. Management of Spoke Spike Share Program has been fully transferred from downtown OKC to COCPA. And that concludes my commission report. Good morning, my name is Guillermo Escobar, and I'm a, high, uh, a senior at the high school Western Heights, and I represent Ward 3. Uh, I will be presenting uh, the report for Ward 3. The organization Friends of 10th had their annual fundraiser, and the, the fundraiser was very successful. The three-phase three -phase project that's going on Northwest 23rd Street has just finished Phase 1 and is getting ready to start Phase 2 from 23rd to I-40 to Bethany Lane. There are, motel, there are more hotel rooms on Meridian between Reno and 29th Street, and the police and fire department are working closely together to make it a more safe and high quality area. This concludes my report. Thank you. Hello, my name is Seth Reed. I'm a senior at Capitol Hill High School, and I will be presenting the Ward 4 Commission Report. On September 25, 2014, the Oklahoma City Planning Commission held a meeting to consider many new rezoning applications, such as the application by BEKW Holdings, LLC, to rezone 16300 Murrayfield Place from the Plan Unit Development District 1104 to the Simplified Plan Unit Development District 775 to develop an office complex. The application for this rezoning was approved. That's all for my report. Thank you. Good morning and hello. My name is Juan Morales and I'm a senior at Santa Fe South High School and I will be giving a Ward 4 report. Ward 4 is up and alive when it comes to celebrating culture. Last week, Fiestas de las Americas hosted its ninth annual celebration, which was located on Calle del Cinco. The community came together to celebrate the rich culture that Hispanic people bring to this country and what they bring to our amazing city. During this festival, there was a parade that started at Capitol Hill High School and went down Walker all the way down to 25th Street, with the, which then turned into the, where the festival was held, where there were multiple booths of local businesses, restaurants, and organizations in the south side of Oklahoma City. The coming together of the community helped build a strong connection for its people. Last but not least, some of our local Thunder basketball players were out in, the act in action this past week. Thanks to the Thunder Cares Foundation and Kia, NBA Thunder players Stephen Adams and Andre Robertson were out at the Skyling Park located on the southeastern part of Oklahoma City, playing on the new Thunder basketball court that was built. The court was painted to represent the Thunder and also had a fence built around it. Now local kids can come out and play basketball. Thank you, Thunder Carriers Foundation, and thank you, Kia. This concludes my Ward 4 report. Gracias. Thank you.
Hello, my name is John Teague. I'm an at-large representative and I attend Mount St. Mary Catholic High School. Progress continues on MAPS 3. At the Oklahoma River, new race course lighting has been constructed along with the new starting and lane marking system. Downstream from the boathouses, the new whitewater facility is scheduled to break ground this month. The facility, which will be open to patrons of all skill levels, is scheduled to be completed in time to host the 2016 U.S. Olympic Canoe and Kayak Trials. At State Fair Park, city officials will break ground on the new Expo Center on October 14th. Upon completion, the 279,000 square foot Expo Center will be the largest event space in Oklahoma City. The center is expected to be ready for use by the 2016 State Fair, and it will be available to host events year round. Other improvements have already been completed at State Fair Park, including parking lot renovations and upgrades to Jim Norick Arena. City Council also recently approved designs of the first of four to five senior health and wellness centers. The first center, which will be privately operated, is designed to have pools and exercise areas, as well as social meeting spaces. Completion of the first center is also scheduled for 2016. The trail and sidewalk programs in MAPS 3 are also both advancing, with the first two projects of phase one of the sidewalk program complete and construction underway on the West River Trail. Thank you, and that concludes my MAPS 3 report. My name is Rebecca Mahajran, and I am a senior at Westmore High School. I am your representative at large. The MAPS for Kids projects continue to see progress with six schools currently in construction. Roosevelt is substantially complete and will be recommended for final acceptance in October. Webster and Taft Middle Schools, along with Columbus and Jackson Elementary Schools, are nearing completion. The bids have been open for the final plans of Emerson Alternative School, renovations, and health clinics. The bond projects are also seeing progress with having completed and accepted eight gyms. Construction is ongoing for both Spiegel and Taft Stadium. If you're interested in keeping up to date with the progress of these projects, there will be more information available after the next trust meeting, which is scheduled for Tuesday, October 7th at 3 p.m. Thank you, and that concludes my report. All right, thank you. Hi, my name is Tyler Dang, and I attend Class in School of Advanced Studies. I proudly represent Ward 5, and this is my commission report. Good news out of the golf courses this month. Revenue has increased at money courses this year. At Lake Hefner Golf Course, the course was up $11,000 in gross revenue over last year. The James E. Stewart Golf Course's revenue is up 7.3%, and the Early Wine Park Golf Course's total revenue was up 5%. The Parks Commission encourages the citizens of Oklahoma City to stay active and healthy, and increased attendance at these golf courses is a good sign. Also, many tournaments, such as the OSS AA 6A Boys Regional Tournament at Early Wine Park Golf Course, was approved, further encouraging youth participation. Also, a group of about 60 citizens have raised funds to pay for a statue and plaque uh, commemorating J.W. Mashburn, an Olympic gold medalist and civic leader. This statue and plaque will be placed in Early Wine Park. The Parks Commission has recently approved this request, so people at Early Wine Park can expect this statue and plaque soon. Thank you, and that concludes my board report. Hello, my name is Jordan Darrow, and I am your representative for Ward 5. Many amazing things are happening in Ward 5. Residential development activity throughout Ward 5 and new commercial developments are being made mainly on Southwest 104th Street. Schools are back in session and both the South Oklahoma City Schools and Moore Schools um, are enjoying their new school year. Districts are experiencing increases in the number of enrolled students. Moore is currently building a new junior high and opened a new elementary school a few weeks ago in Ward 5. Councilman Greenwell has been attending neighborhood homeowner meetings to discuss the city's progress with the street repairs, enhancements to our park, the hiring of additional police and firefighters, and MAPS 3 projects, including those at the fairgrounds, along the river, and in downtown. Thank you so much, and this concludes my Ward 5 report. Thank you, Ward 5. 
Hello, Oklahoma. My name is Samantha Basave. I'm a junior at Harding Fine Arts Academy, and I will be representing Ward 6. The Marriott Gardens will be hosting their annual Pumpkinville, presented by the OG&E headquarters. There'll be lots of stories and lots of games. It'll go on through October 10th through October 31st. Are you feeling hungry? Lucky for you, the Blue Garden food truck at 10th and Hudson is open, so give them a visit. The John Rex School held their ribbon cutting ceremony at, on September 12th, and now they are excited to open enrollment. This concludes my report for Ward 6. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Chase Hill. I'm a senior at US Grant High School, and I will be representing Ward 6. Here's Ward 6 commission report. City has opened up a boat dock and passage connecting the Bricktown Canal to the Oklahoma River. Passengers can now walk down the sidewalk and hop onto another boat. The sidewalk connects the boathouse to Bricktown through a bridge that runs underneath Interstate 40. This concludes my Ward 6 commission report. Thank you, Ward 6. Hello, my name is Carlos Hotshaw. I attend Douglas High School and I'm a representative of Ward 7. Great news, this past month, a, a jazz festival took place in Bricktown. Hispanic Festival was held in the Capitol Hill area. A river festival was also held in the Bowhouse District, also known as the Regatta. In other news, OKC Thunder and Kia Motors dedicated a newly refurbished basketball court in Schilling Park were also preparing to begin preseason games next week. Thank you. And this, this concludes my report on War 7. Hello, my name is Kara Traster. I am a homeschool junior, and this is the commission report for Ward 7. The 31st annual Haunt the Zoo begins Sunday, October 26th and lasts until October 31st. Also, from October 4th until the 12th, you can bring a pumpkin larger than your head and receive free zoo admission that day. Also, in other news, the new baby gorilla, Kamima, her mother recently rejected her and the zoo decided to transfer her into an out-of-state zoo. And this concludes my report on what's Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Courtney Duckett. I'm a senior at Putnam City North, and I represent Ward 8. Coming our way, this month marks the opening of Oklahoma City's brand new Von Maher department store, which will open at Quail Springs Mall October 18th. The store will employ 150 workers and is expected to generate $40 million in annual sales. On October 28th at 7.30 p.m., Putnam City North High School's DECA is having their 36th annual DECA fashion show with clothing supplied by local retailers. All proceeds will go toward funding students to compete in competitions. Deer Creek High School prepares to host its annual parade followed by Fall Carnival, Thursday, October 30th. It will feature several local food trucks in a haunted house, a pumpkin patch, and trick-or-treating for kids. This concludes my Ward 8 report. Hi, I'm Sabrina Chaudhry from Deer Creek High School, and I'll be giving the Ward 8 Commission Report. The City of Oklahoma's water conservation program is currently in full swing. The U.S. drought monetary places the city under a D1, D2, severe to moderate drought intensity, with the total accessible lake capacity reaching 56% in conservation efforts, it's placed the city on mandatory odd-even odd even watering days. To assist with monitoring personal water usage, an online program, SIP, a simple irrigation plan, has been put in place. Not only does it tell you the best way to care for your lawn, it estimates the amount of water you'll need for the next three days and the cost. For more information on how you can save a few drops, visit squeezeeverydrop.com. And that concludes my commitment report. Okay, thank you, Ward 8. The Oklahoma City Youth Council meets regularly throughout the school year. For an application or more information on the Youth Council program, call 463-3340.